and these are all prime land areas where properties in here are very expensive now those areas of cantonment used to be the hub of the colonial administrators where we have a lot of government bangalows here now the government came out with a plan some few years ago of re-demarcation of the land or re planning so that's why we see more of new buildings in those areas now on my immediate left and to your right is the first coffee shop in Ghana Laboni coffee shop purposely but now they have changed it they've added a lot of things because when you want to run only a coffee shop in Ghana you will close down <laughs> Unless you have a whole bunch of uh, white folks who love coffee in the morning and want to pay eight dollars for a yeah, sixty dollars so, cup of coffee, so I, you you it don't work in Ghana. Yes. But, but it works lovely in America. Uh, but not in Ghana. You, you see you all these the... coffee shops all over the place. <laughs> not in Ghana. It doesn't work. What about tea? tea? No. Nah. You see the ago, the typical Ghanaian will not want tea. For breakfast no. <laughs> no one bread for breakfast no fried egg for breakfast a typical Ghanaian will want his heavy food in the morning for breakfast that is banku or wache or rice so we take heavy breakfast in the morning and we don't even care about lunch but we care about dinner heavy dinner before uh, okay, okay, where's the fruit set? Where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the fruit set? And the, 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 the vegetables fruits. in a diet. We have the fruits, we have all that. But we take the fruits just like. We take the fruits just like. Uh, okay, I have not. Yeah, like snacks. Yeah. So in, in, in the traditional sector, we don't really have. Uh, snap, but we have the fruits, we take it as yeah. and when I feel like eating some yeah. banana, eating some yeah. this thing. But, yeah, okay, we are now on the ring road. Ring road. Now, the ring road was constructed by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Now, it's called the ring road because initially the project was to go around Accra like a ring. Okay, coming up is the former US embassy. Or uh, my right, and uh, on my right. So who has it? Uh, on my left and on your right. Coming up is a white building. Yeah. Just after the bridge, we have the U former U.S. Embassy, and is now uh, houses the Ghana Revenue Authority. Oh, okay. And okay, yeah, that is it there. That's the U.S. Embassy, oh, yeah, right. former U.S. Embassy. Oh From man, that here, was too small. That's not America style. <laughs> <laughs> From here, they moved to. The current Adamance. location. Yeah. Now, so coming up, we are at Dankwa Circle. Oh, yeah. Dr. J.B. Dankwa or Dr. Joseph Bochi Dankwa was part of the earliest people who have formed the political party in Ghana. He is a philosopher, a writer, a lawyer, and he died as an opposition leader to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, that is the uh, yes. Uh, uh, he's also the uncle of the current president. Uh, oh, yes. okay. Oh, is he one of the what? The big four, the big five, no, the, the currency, the big six. Oh, the big six. Okay, and the currency. Yes. Okay. So he's one of the big six okay. on the currency, Dr. J. B. Dankwa. So on this very road, we have Dr. J. B. Dankwa. We have Aquaje Interchange. We have. Obechebelam, we have Dr. Kwame Nkrumah Circle, and then we have Obechebelam. So one, two, three, four. Four of those people are on the currency. Four of the big six are on the currency. On this road alone. Now this is the United Nations offices in Ghana. On my left and on your right, that is the UN offices in Ghana. Behind it we have the United Nations population. And then just immediately after the UN, we have the Ghana National Fire Service headquarters here. And just across the street, we have the Honeysuckle. It's also a restaurant 
expensive restaurant. <laughs> yeah. So, so who owns some of these chains? This Hanasako is owned by a Ghanaian. It's owned by a Ghanaian. So it's owned by. You said it's very expensive. Yes, in terms of Ghanaian standard, it's expensive because a typical Ghanaian will not come and want to buy food for 150 cities or 100 cities. Yeah, you you rather go to what we call chop bar. Chop bar. Now chop bar is not. It's a literal translation from the local language into English. Now, like I said yesterday, we have the English as the official language, but we have two types of English used in the country. Uh -oh. We have the, the real, and then we have the street one, or what we call the broken <laughs> English. And that is people who do not have formal education we use. And especially also among the youth, we use that language. So for example, if I want to talk to uh, Duncan, I will say, Duncan, come. I will say, come here. Are they come? If Duncan they call come? me, uh -huh. I will say, are they come? It means I am coming. OK, that's the police hospital. <laughs> hey, sorry, that's the police headquarters. The next building is the criminal investigation department of the Ghana Police Service. So that's their headquarters. We are entering Akwaje Interchange. Now, Akwaje, Dr. Akwaje, was the one who spotted Dr. Kwame Nkrumah in England and recommended him to the United Gold Coast Convention. And he came back, and that is why. But originally, when this circle, when this interchange was built, was not named after Dr. Akwaje, was named after Thomas Sankara, uh, Captain Thomas yeah, Sankara Burkina of Burkina Faso because during his reign, uh, Ghana and Burkina Faso became like brothers and sisters and therefore uh, the government by then, led by Flat Lebanon Jerry John Rollins, decided to name this circle after Thomas Sankara. When there was a change of government, the government decided to change the name and turn it into Akwaje Interchange. We are now leaving the cantonment area, entering the rich area. The rich area of Accra is exclusive area for the British at the, at the time. But now it's no longer because as officers, government officials, private people, ambassadors, and everybody stays in this area. We are now leaving the La into Osu traditional area. This, this whole area is for the people of Osu, OSU. That is the Canadian Embassy, or High Commission. Next to it, the stone wall, is the U.S. Ambassador's residence. That's the residence of the U.S. Ambassador. Wow, that's a big place for a resident. What he got his whole, his whole staff and food there. Next, next is the Nigerian Ambassador in Ghana. That's the Nigerian Ambassador. Go big or go home. Now we are back on the liberation road. And coming up is the headquarters of the Momos Church in West Africa, the Latter-day Saints. Is that the biggest church in uh, Ghana? No, 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 no. No, it's not? No, no. This is not? This is for the uh, Latter-day Saints. Uh -huh. And it's the West African headquarters. Yeah, oh, it's not a church, it's a headquarters. Yes, yes. yes. But we have quite some big, big churches, yes, like the Action Chapel, like the Lighthouse, like ICGC, and all that. And the upcoming cathedral. <laughs> yeah. That's the one oh, that's ridiculous. Who <laughs> <laughs> bone name, like Cote okay. That one is. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then, then I also saw the new mosque. The new mosque yes, look real, yes, real yes, big. Yes. I, I don't think at, it's finished yet, right? No, they've done it. It's open. Nima. Yes. Oh, and then I saw another one when I was in Senegal. Yeah. Speak, you know, yeah. So that is place. the World Bank headquarters in Ghana. Mm -hmm. That's the World Bank office oh, in Ghana. Yeah. And coming up is the headquarters of the biggest cellular network in Ghana, MTN. Uh, MTN is not the first cellular company in Ghana. Yes, it is Millicom Ghana Limited operator called Tigo, now Airtel Tigo. They were the first, but unfortunately, they have been overtaken by MTN. Competition. And MTN has over 15 million subscribers so almost half of ghana hook onto the mtn network and then the government also used to have its telecommunication company known as the ghana telecom but 
in 206, 205, 206, the government decided to sell it to the British phone company Vodafone. Mm -hmm. So it's now owned by Vodafone. So we don't have Ghana Telecom anymore. And yeah. one time you so, had the, so the Mel wait, wait, it was the, um, what they call it, I hate. The, the calling card thing. Anyway, Malaysia was wrapped up with it. It was something Malaysia. You go with it by uh, Kwame Kuma Circle, and you got the. It was a calling card or something. No, uh, um, Malaysia was. They used Malaysia. The country. No, no, no. Um, the only network that is a TV station that was bought by the Malaysians and that something. used to be the Ghana Film Industry Corporation. Yes, I know it was yeah, Ghana Film Industry Corporation, and now operated as media general of TV3 okay. network that was bought by the Malaysia resold it to Ghanaian so it's now now we are now in yeah, fancy I noticed um yes me, Nana. yes I noticed that I could be wrong but I noticed we don't I don't see uh stoplights <laughs> traffic lights <laughs> there are no. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Maybe okay. you're not saying so. Uh -oh. our, when we get to one, I show when it's not working, it means that the, the power is off. But but we have hundreds of traffic lights all over the city, and we also have police traffic controllers at vantage points when the lights are not working. So when you see any man or a woman in a white uniform with a black cap is the MTTD, the motor traffic unit of the Ghana Police Service. They are there to control the traffic. And I will see, show you one. Well, this is the proposed cathedral site, ah, the National yeah. Cathedral, uh, uh -huh. to my, that is a controversial project. Thank you. So there's a lot of debate going on about that so when you talk much about yeah, it yeah. you are into political so yeah. it's a national cathedral yes. being put out by the government of ghana for worship yeah and not done so many okay coming up is, on my left is the parliament of ghana but originally this is not it's a state house now the tower was built by dr kwame Nkrumah to host the all africa people's mm. conference mm. it's also known as job 600 so that's the entrance to the Parliament House. And to my right is the Pink Lady, or what we call the Accra International Conference Center. This was built in 1992-93 to host the Non-Aligned Ministerial Conference. Ghana belonged to the Non-Aligned Movement. Non-Aligned Movement or the Non-Aligned Organization is countries that were in between, you know, during the Cold War. So they established this organization, India, Ghana, and others. And of course, you should know Kwame Nkrumah will mm -hmm. be part of mm -hmm. that organization. So we have the non-aligned movement. So these countries are forming. Currently, the conference that is ongoing here is the meeting, the annual meeting of the African Development Bank. Mm -hmm. That is going on here. So that's the Parliament House. And this small building is the chamber of Ghana's Parliament comprising 275 parliamentarians representing the 31 point something million people. We are in the Osu area and thus coming up is the old military cemetery. This is the old military cemetery. And Accra's biggest cemetery is next to the military cemetery known as Osu Cemetery. Now in Ghana, 90% or 99% of people who pass on or would die are buried. Now when you want to be cremated, you need to put that in writing, capital letters. Not to your wife, not to your husband, not to your children, but to your family, head of family. And That's even, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do people follow them? That's the question. Okay. <laughs> See, they always, do they always follow them? That's the well, the traffic lights, yeah are followed but when i'm getting to the tip thank you and it's amber yeah i drive <laughs> now when the police is right, there right that's different. everybody do the right thing yes. yeah absolutely i know that's right now